so you want to putt better hi guys so i just wanted to start this video off with a disclaimer i have said this in many videos but i am not a coach i'm a professional golfer currently playing on tour i've played golf for more than 10 years so i have learned quite a few over the years but i have in no way learned about the fundamentals based on like the way golf is taught or like the science behind golf this is just my personal experience and what i have learned over the years and what maybe worked for me or what didn't but i'm just sharing this with you guys based on my personal experience <music> So here's what's funny, correct me if I'm wrong, but we all know that putting is one of the most important parts of the game. But how many of us has actually been for a putting lesson or like actually learned putting? Personally for me, I don't even remember learning putting. That's why I feel like recently I've learned a lot more than I've ever known in my entire, li known in my entire life because I feel like the putter is one of those things where people, a lot of people start golf with putting. So they just kind of are given the putter and it's one of those things where it's a lot easier to hit the ball. It's not like a swing where you have to learn how to swing before you're actually able to make contact with the ball. With a putter, it's pretty easy to just hit the ball. So I think a lot of us never actually learn how to putt. Now, if you ask me, I think there's two kinds of good putters. The first kind is the person with a very technically sound putting stroke. So obviously what it means is that their putting stroke, if you put it in a sand putt lab or if it's analyzed by a coach, they would say your putting stroke is very good, it's very repeatable, it's on plane, it's perfect, it's good. The other kind is the person that might not necessarily have a very good putting stroke, but they're very, what I would call a determined putter. Like if they had to make a putt, they would make a putt. So they just kind of wheel the ball into the hole. One of the benefits of being a technically sound putter is that if you are very good technically, Chances are if you're a bad putter, it just means that you either don't know how to read greens or you need to work on your pace. So because your stroke is already technically good, all you need to do is then focus on these two areas of putting. Whereas if you're somebody who wheels the ball in at all times, like you, your putting stroke is kind of iffy but you can putt, you probably know how to adjust to the point that you've probably played with your putting stroke for so long that you know exactly what kind of read you need for your putting stroke. So there's no wrong and right way to putt because I think that, like I said before, putting is something that honestly, you can, it's not that difficult to take a putter and to hit the ball. It's just whether you can do it consistently. And I think that's the most important thing. A good putter is someone who can do the, who, who does the same thing over and over again, because then when you can expect consistency, that's when you can start judging the right line for your pace. And that's when you can start working on your pace as well. Because if you cannot hit the same part of the putter face every single time, there's no way that you can read the right line or pace because you don't know which part of the putter you're going to hit it on. So I think it's important for you to understand and to be able to analyze what kind of putter you are. And I think the easiest way, which I've said before, is just to color your ball in half and see if you can actually roll the ball end over end. If you have a good roll every single time, you're probably fundamentally pretty sound. If not, then you need to understand that if you are not a good fundamental putter but you make a lot of putts and you decide like, oh, I've, I don't think my putting is great because I just wheel it in but I'm not actually a good putter, like your putting stroke is not good, just understand that for a period of time, you might get worse. Like your putting is probably going to get worse because most of the time when you're a putter who wheels something in, who wheels the putts in, you probably already, your body has already compensated for what you, you tend to do. So for instance, if you're somebody who pushes the ball, your body probably has compensated for that by aiming more left and accommodating for your push stroke. So most of the time when you read lines, you're going to end up reading the wrong lines. And because when you push, maybe you don't hit it as solid as when you hit it in the center of the face, you're probably going to have trouble with pace and line reading. So just understanding that if that's the kind of putter you are, making adjustments is going to be hard before it becomes easy and if you're okay with that then that's fine if not maybe if you're just like you know what i'm good enough at putting i don't need to work on it then understand that on certain days you're not going to putt well because that's just part of it you know some days you just don't feel right and that's just not for non-fundamentally sound putters but that's just for everyone in general but obviously when you have a more fundamentally sound putting stroke it's easier to make accommodations on days when even when you don't feel like you're putting well. And if you're thinking, Jen, I came here for a quick fix. I'm just trying to fix my putting stroke. I didn't come here for a lecture. 
then you probably clicked on the wrong video because you need to understand that every single thing that you do has a cause and effect and there's no such thing as a quick fix. Whatever you're going to do, you need to work on it and if you're not committed to working on it, you might as well just play with what you have because it's probably going to get worse if you try to work on something and you're not committed to change. Okay, there's freaking bugs everywhere. Um, so decide what you want before you try to learn more or before you try to implement a change because we're all, all out here to play happy golf, not to get even more frustrated because you're trying to implement a change, but you're not doing 100% and now you're putting even worse. <laughs> okay, so now that I've given you guys a nice lecture, let's talk about the putting stroke. I think like every single part of golf, the putting stroke, everything has a cause and effect. There's a reason why you do everything, especially when you've been playing golf for a long time and it's already almost just fell down <laughs> and it's already something that it's ingrained in your body. There is a reason why you do certain things. So for instance, setup. One of the things that people always talk with the putting stroke is that your eyes need to be over the ball. And they are not wrong, but let me just talk a little bit about that. So this is a selfie camera and that's why it's inverted because I know a lot of people are going to ask me that. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that you're going to realize is when you talk about your eyes being over the ball, meaning like when you putt, you can't see it but basically what you do is you drop a ball and when it drops it's basically your ball is going to be here right down with your putter right here one of the reasons why people tend to be either forward like so they're too far forward or they're too far back could actually be related to either the pressure on their feet or their club positioning so sometimes people like to do this they lift they lift the toe of the putter up what then tends to happen is when you lift the putter up your balance goes backwards and your head goes backwards so that's why your head ends up being behind the ball and vice versa some people lift it too high up and then their eyes go forward because all the weight's going forward so i think understanding and making sure that if some some people like to putt with the toe up because generally when you putt the toe up it gives you more of an arc and if you find that that helps your putting stroke know that you are probably going to be behind the ball a little bit and if you try to be right over the ball you're probably going to putt worse because your putter face and your eyes do not align so like i said before it's all about consistency if you can do the same thing over and over again every single time you're putting the center of the face then it doesn't really matter where your eyes drop as long as it's the same every single time so like i said this is my opinion i think some people will go against me and say no jen every all the best putters in the world putt with the ball right under their eye they're not wrong i mean i'm sure there are a lot of people who do but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are really great putters who don't as well so like I said, it's all about consistency, but understanding the relationship of why you do something is very important, not only in putting, but in the rest of your golf game as well, because everything always has a correlation. So another thing that people tend to do and something that my coach just recently told me as well is one of the things that tends to happen is people always tell you to hold and keep your head down and don't move your head. But what is important is that you're not moving your head this direction. So it's like this. What tends to happen and I do it myself is when you tend to hold your when you try to hold your head down what happens is that your hands go forward and your head goes back like this. So you're not holding it in the same position you're actually moving it back. That's why similar to the golf swing there are people who you know they swing and then at impact they just lift their head up to give themselves more um, ability to rotate. It's the same with the putter. You don't want to move your head back because what what happens when you do this is that your putter face is left open which is what i learned recently that i do sometimes with my putting so i think it's important to understand that yes people tell the right things but they might not necessarily tell it to you in the right way so just hearing whatever and just absorbing everything is not very smart as well you need to understand why you do everything keeping it in the same place and keeping it square is good because it helps bring your putter back to the same position that it was but be careful not to do this because what happens most of the time when you try to keep your head steady in one spot is obviously because your hands are moving, your head goes backwards. So understanding why you do something is important and don't just listen to what everybody says. Um, learn why you're doing something, learn what you're supposed to do and learn it the correct way instead of just following whatever people say.
So my general advice is if you don't know what you're doing with your putting at all and you are a bad putter or you actually want to do something about putting and improve it, well then go see a putting coach, go get a putting assessment and do something about it. But don't just listen to random advice and also know why you are doing every single thing that you are doing. Because what you hear and what you interpret might be completely different. So understanding what you're actually supposed to do is very important. So another thing that I've learned recently as well, and I think it's something that we hear all the time, is people telling us to keep our left wrist flat when we putt. So what I learned recently is that, okay, this is kind of a weird posture because I'm standing really close to the camera, but when you take your backstroke, your putter is supposed to go to your ear, your left ear, and your forward stroke, it goes to your right ear. So what tends to happen is if you are doing that putting stroke where you are just keeping your wrist flat, what happens is you don't do move it like a pendulum which is pointing up here what happens is you tend to do this right and this is going to the same ear that it was on the backstroke so understanding like i said before if you do that and you think you're a good putter and you don't need to work on your putting that's fine keep doing what you're doing but understanding what the actual fundamentals what is supposed to be done is important because then you kind of know what you are doing differently and you know your style of putting knowing your style of putting is so important because if you don't know your st own style of putting you can't own your own style of putting and you cannot be good at it so like what i said about the putting ear to ear thing just also understand that there's a lot of ways to manipulate the golf club that you actually do that but without doing it correctly so this is a drill that i got from richard lee pga you guys can go give him a follow on instagram um, it's a great drill just to get the feel. It works for me. As I said before, golf is not a one-size-fix-all kind, quick fix kind of thing. It might not work for you, but it helps me get the feel of what it feels like to go from ear to ear. So I'm just going to show it to you guys. And the goal here is not to make the putt, it's just to get the feel of the putting stroke from ear to ear. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps your putting.